Hey guys, TrueGreen7 here, and today I'm going to help you trainers out by showing you the origins of every starter Pokemon and their evolutions in a two-part series. In this video, I will talk about the Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn starters, and in a later video I will continue with the starters from Gens 4, 5, and 6, and maybe Generation 7 if I try real hard. As a self-proclaimed Pokemon expert, I enjoy learning new facts about Pokemon history and origins. So I tried my very best, like no one ever did, to entertain you guys while simultaneously dishing out some spicy hot information. So enjoy! Let's begin with the first starter family, the Venusaur line. Are you ready to learn about the first grass starters? Cause... cause I'm not. Just kidding. As a whole, this Kanto evolutionary family is primarily based on a group of extinct mammal-like reptiles known as Dicynodonts. Bulbasaur has various amphibious elements like a wide mouth, blotched skin patterns, and ears without hollows. The bulb on its back does resemble that of a lily or onion. Its name is a portmanteau of bulb and the Greek word sore, meaning lizard. Ivysaur looks more mammalian. Its name comes from the ivy plant and sore. The hefty Venusaur's name is a nod to the Venus flytrap plant, and the flower on its back does resemble the stinky Rafflesia plant, the same huge flower that Vileplume is based on. Now let's move on to the Charizard line. The popular Charmander and his evolutions are based on the tale of mythical salamanders that can survive intense heat and fire, cause ancient people were stupid really. But Charmander does have the physiology of lizards as opposed to real world salamanders, which are amphibians. This sassy salamander's name is a combination of char, which means to burn, and salamander. Charmeleon has dinosaur-like elements. Its name comes from char and the chameleon. Now Charizard is clearly based on classic European dragons. Its name is a portmanteau of char and lizard. Simple enough. Now it's Squirtle time. Squirtle is based on a sea turtle if you, if you didn't know already. It does have tortoise-like elements though. Squirtle comes from the words squirt and turtle. War turtle comes from the words war, warrior, tortoise and turtle. Its ears and tail are based on Japanese representations of a minogame. A turtle which lived for 10,000 years and grew a tail made of seaweed. Blastoise looks more like a tortoise mixed with a tank than a turtle, hence his name being a combination of blast and tortoise. Truly genius names I know. Now we can cross Mount Silver and journey to the Johto region. The Meganium line is based on sauropod dinosaurs like the Apatosaurus. Chikorita's shape alludes to that of a pear or a Belgian endive which is a type of chicory. Its name comes from chicories, which are flowering plants, and ita, which is a feminine Spanish suffix for something small or young. Chikorita evolves into the beautiful bay leaf. Its veggie parts are based on bay leaves, the type of leaves that are used for healing and aromatherapy. Now let me tell you a little something about Meganium's flower. It may be a geranium, but it's designed after a hippiestrum. Very interesting stuff, I know. Its name is a combo of Mega and Geranium, which is the flower I just talked about. I know, you already forgot. The Typhlosion line is next. Cyndaquil looks like an echidna with traits from a shrew. Its closed eyes resemble the eyes of baby honey badgers, which is what Typhlosion is based on. Cyndaquil is a combination of Cinder and Quill. Quillava looks like a weasel and a paca. Its name comes from Quill and Lava. The honey badger based Typhlosion obviously doesn't give a shinx. Its name comes from Typhoon and Explosion. Like, like an ex, like a explosion typhoon. The Feraligator family is based on the order of Crocodilian, which include alligators and crocodiles. Totodile comes from the words tot and crocodile. Crocona is a combination of crocodile and gnaw, meaning to bite. Its animal skin like pattern does resemble cavemen. It totally looks like Fred Flintstone. Feraligator is a combination of feral and alligator. The shortening of gator to gator is a result of the 10 English character limit in Generation 2. And now Hoenn is in the house! We got my boy Trico up in here. Trico, the tree gecko, is based on the leaf-tailed gecko, just like its evolutions, Grovile and Sceptile. Grovile, appearance-wise, resembles theropod dinosaurs, many of which are believed to have had feathers that resemble Grovile's leaf blades. Its name is a portmanteau of grove and reptile. The jungle king septile resembles theropods as well. The orbs of nutrients on its back may be based on the fact that many leguminous plants have nitrogen stored in their roots, 
just like how the legumes on its back are bursting with nutrients that revitalize trees. Its name is a combo of reptile and septricium, a type of fern, like its tail. His name could also be a pun on the word sectile, which means the ability to cut, and the word scepter referring to its title as king of the forest, or a scythe referring to its sharp leaf blades. Now it's Torchic's turn. Its family is based on chickens, and the legendary Basa Basa, a fire-breathing Japanese chicken. Torchic is a combination of torch and chicken. Combuskin is based on the concept of cockfighting, and its name is a combination of combustion and chicken. Blaziken's main and upright position is based on a specific breed of Japanese fighting chicken known as Shamo. This blaze chicken could also be based on the Egyptian gods Horus and Ra, a phoenix, or a Karura. Try to get that out of your head. As we get to our final starter family, I must ask one question. Do you like mudkips? Cause mudkip and its family are conceptually based on the mudskipper. But design wise, they're based on the axolotl salamander and mud puppy. Mudkip's name is just a shortening of mudskipper. Marsh Stomp gets its name from Marsh and Stomp. But I must admit that its head fin design does resemble Roman gladiator helmets. The name Swampert is a combination of Swamp and Expert. And that's all for today. Join me next time when I reveal the origins of all starter Pokemon from Gens 4, 5, and 6, and their evolutions. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I really want to know what you guys think about this video. I'll see you guys really soon. True Green 7 out.